The word dungeon is derived from the French term donjon, which refers to the great keep or central tower of a castle rather than an underground prison. The French word for dungeon is actually cachotte. This central keep or donjon was usually the strongest structure in a medieval castle. Surrounded by thick stone walls, these keeps had few windows, making them the perfect place for a prison. During the 11th century, early castle keeps were usually square in shape, but the 12th century saw the use of battering rams and the damage that they could inflict on a castle, which led to round towers being built. A round structure was harder to damage. Being the most secure part of the castle in the early Middle Ages, the Great Keep was where the Lord and his entourage would lodge and was the perfect place for them to take refuge if the rest of the castle was overrun by enemy forces. But eventually, this central structure became the ideal stronghold for the security of valuable items or important captives. Eventually, the word dungeon came to mean any type of jail within the confines of a castle. But it was mainly used to describe those that were underground, and although not originally built for this purpose, these basement areas did make perfect prisons. During the early medieval era, imprisonment was not really a thing. It was more common to either fine, mutilate, or execute criminals. But in turbulent times of war, it was often necessary to hold political prisoners who could be used for negotiation and inducement. Even so, only the most high-level captives would actually be held hostage for long periods of time. Incarcerating common criminals was just not worth the effort or the expense. Today, we're going to be traveling back in time and learning about the Oubliette, a medieval torture of unspeakable horror. Welcome to Medieval Madness. The Dungeon Built in the 9th century, the once magnificent Pontefract Castle in Yorkshire, England, is infamous for its enormous system of oppressive dungeons. The castle has seen its fair share of violence throughout its history. In 1311, King Edward II held his cousin Thomas, Earl of Lancaster, and 20 other rebels in the dungeons before their executions. Then in 1399, after surrendering to Henry Bolingbroke, Richard II was secretly moved north from the Tower of London to Pontefract Castle. It is thought that he was imprisoned in the tiny dungeon beneath the keep. There, shut away in the cold, damp darkness, historians believe that Richard was either murdered or left to starve. Regardless of the cause of his death, he died on St. Valentine's Day in the year 1400, aged just 33 leaving the way clear for Bolingbroke to become King Henry IV. In the later years of the English Civil War, Oliver Cromwell, leader of the victorious parliamentarians, hated Pontefract Castle because it was the last royalist stronghold to surrender. So he made it his mission to wipe the castle off the face of the earth. To do this, he begged the people of the town of Pontefract to petition Parliament for the castle's destruction. The locals were more than happy to support Cromwell's plans, for them, it was nothing but a reminder of the many times that the town of Pontefract had been plundered by soldiers marching through on their way to the castle. Their houses robbed, their men killed, and their women raped. Cromwell's petitioning was successful, and work began on the castle's destruction in 1649. The ruins of Pontefract Castle can still be seen today, and behind what remains of the castle's once magnificent curtain wall, some 35 feet below ground, lay its dark and depressing dungeons. Originally a monastery, Chillingham Castle was ideally placed on the border between the two feuding nations of Scotland and England. In 1246, the manor house was given to the Grey family by Henry III. In 1344, King Edward III gave orders for the castle to be upgraded, and it was turned into a fortress, complete with battlements, a torture chamber, and dungeons. The merciless Hammer of the Scots, King Edward I, used Chillingham dungeons to imprison his captives, who were horribly tortured. Not just Scottish soldiers and spies, but also women and children. Many had their arms and legs broken before being dropped 20 feet through a trap door to the dungeon below. With just one tiny arrow slit of light penetrating the thick walls, the poor prisoners were then left to starve 
becoming so desperate that some resorted to eating their own flesh. It is said that 7,500 Scottish prisoners died at Chillingham, and their bodies were dumped into the lake. The Bottle Originally built in the late 12th century, St Andrew's Castle stands on the coast in Fife, Scotland. During the Scottish Wars of Independence, it changed hands several times between the Scots and the English under the rule of King Edward I. In the northwest corner of the castle is a sea tower that served as a prison when the castle was functional. The higher floors would have been used as a guest accommodation, as well as to imprison nobles and keep them under house arrest. On the ground floor there were two chambers, the first being a small room with a narrow ventilation slit in the eastern wall, but it was the second room that contained the notorious bottle dungeon. Cut out of the solid rock, the chamber is 24 feet deep, wide at the bottom and narrow at the top, with no windows and no ventilation. Essentially, prisoners were lowered into this pit and left to rot. One poor soul who was imprisoned there in 1402 was David Stuart, Duke of Rothsay, who was heir to the Scottish throne. However, he didn't die there, instead he was transferred to another dungeon, this time at Falkland Palace, where he was left to starve to death. Murdoch Stuart, Duke of Albany, was also held in the St Andrew's Castle dungeons before his execution for treason at Stirling Castle in 1425. Sadly, the first Archbishop of St Andrews, Patrick Graham, was also held there after he was deemed to be insane. He was confined to live at a monastery and died at Loch Leven in 1478. The Oubliette So it would seem that being imprisoned in the Middle Ages was hardly a pleasant experience. Although these nobles who were held for ransom were given comfortable accommodation and treated quite well, for most people, life in a castle prison was a horrific experience. Violence was part of life for the medievals, and tortures such as broken bones from racking, dislocated fingers from thumbscrews, and branding from red-hot pokers were all accepted forms of punishment. And as if being held in the dungeons and systematically tortured wasn't bad enough, Along came a jail cell that could inflict even more torment such as the oubliette, or forgotten room. Many who were thrown in this brutal pit would never see the light of day again. A prison made from a stone cylindrical hole, the oubliette was a vertical shaft, so tiny that it was probably difficult to turn around, let alone kneel, sit, or lay down. Many were underground, making them a dungeon within a dungeon meaning that all the water and detritus from everywhere else would seep in, making the hole cold and damp. Lowered down into the shaft by rope, the prisoner would have been forced to stand in the dark, deep pit until they were released, possibly standing on the rotting corpse or bones of the last unfortunate guest. Some prisoners were left there for weeks, as they were periodically thrown a little food and water. For others, the torment lasted only days, as they were left to starve and die. Imagine the psychological terror, as the trapdoor above them, too high to reach, closed, and they were plunged into the claustrophobic and dank-smelling blackness, standing in fetid water, with only rats for company. The name of this horrific jail is derived from the French word oublier, which means to forget, and they were used throughout the Middle East and Europe. The Bastille in France was notorious for its use of oubliettes, as was the Romeli Hisari in what is now modern Turkey. The medieval French fortress known as the Bastille was built to defend the city of Paris from English attack during the Hundred Years' War. King Charles V of France expanded the citadel in 1370, adding dungeons beneath its six new towers. The Rumeli Hisari, nicknamed Throat Cutter Castle, was built during the mid-15th century on the European side of the Bosporus Strait, in what was then the Byzantine city of Constantinople, and is now called Istanbul. On the sixth level of the tower was a secret doorway, which led to a deep hole, deliberately built into the thick stone wall. When an unsuspecting prisoner was pushed through the doorway, he would fall 13 feet to the bottom of a very deep, dark hole. Still alive, but probably very badly injured, he would be left there to rot. 
Located beneath the White Tower in the fortress of the Tower of London was another tiny cell which measured a mere four foot square. This made it impossible for the average adult human to sit, stand, lie down, or find any comfortable position. The cell was given the rather mocking nickname of Little Ease. With no windows, the prisoner was forced to crouch, alone in total darkness and growing agony, sometimes for days or even weeks at a time, only to be released periodically for interrogation and torture. Guy Fawkes, who was involved in the failed gunpowder plot on November the 5th of 1605, was held inside Little Ease. Usually, noble prisoners were kept under some form of house arrest and would be given chambers, perhaps in the keep, and possibly freedom to roam around the castle at will. If they were thrown into the oubliette, their time there would more than likely be short-lived as the punishment was used as part of the torture strategy in an effort to extract information. Conwy Castle in Wales was built by our old friend Edward I, who, not satisfied with conquering the Scots, wanted to subjugate the Welsh as well. Conwy was built in the 1280s during the conquest of Wales. Leading off from the Great Hall is Prison Tower. Here there is a chamber which may have been quite comfortable if the prisoner were offered the relief of a chair or bed, but below this is the true dungeon a 12 foot deep pit that is hewn into the rock, with only one entrance, being the trap door above. At Pembroke Castle in 1440, John Withorn was imprisoned in the oubliette there by Humphrey, Duke of Gloucestershire and Earl of Pembroke. Poor Withorn was deprived of clothing and given little food. Left in the dark, claustrophobic pit, he became blind and suffered other incurable ills. As if that wasn't bad enough, the oubliette at Leap Castle in Ireland has spikes in the floor just for a little more added suffering. The small dungeon, which is near to the chapel, was originally used for storing valuables. During renovations to the castle carried out in the 1920s, it was reported that workers found the remains of over 150 people. Three cartloads of skeletons were said to have been removed. Just another reminder of how many oubliettes are out there, and for the medievals, how popular this form of cruel and unusual punishment was. Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. We do release a new one every week, so please be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more, and click the little bell icon to be notified. Cheers!